Let me take just a few seconds to pre-roll my own video and say that this is just one of 54 that I include in my type design masterclass. So I know you came to this video looking for a very specific answer, but it's also a preview of what you could learn in that class, which teaches you how to design a typeface from the sketching phase all the way through the rendering phase and exporting phase and even design your own type specimen. So if that sounds interesting to you or if you find this video helpful, be sure to check out the information in the bio for more information and how you can get designing your own font today. Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at the glyphs interface. This is just going to familiarize ourselves with where things are and what we can look for. And since this can be on a computer, it's always time for me to put on my blue blocking glasses. If this were an ad, it would be right here for these amazing Ray-Bans. Let's look at Glyphs. So if you're on a MacBook, we're going to open Glyphs 3. And when Glyphs 3 launches, it'll pull up this starter window, which is way better than Glyphs 2 used to be. You can see here I've got some fonts. It does like our Adobe programs do and opens some recent font files. For us, we're going to start a new document. Now, Glyphs has prepared us for any number of languages. You can see this amazing plethora of starter files they have taken into consideration. If, like me, you only speak one language, we're going to work on that Latin one. This is what I'm familiar with, and this is what this course is about. So I'll select Latin, and then I'm going to choose to say yes, I would like to prepare glyphs for, and I don't want to select any of these, but I'm going to choose the basic. If I were setting up a really large font family with a number of characters, I might go ahead and select some of these other versions. You can see that glyphs is going to prepare some files for us. For our purposes, we'll start with the basic, and then we'll select create document. Now once our document is created, you'll see the Glyphs interface. It should look something like this. This is our home page, or we'll consider it our little home area, where it houses all these font files. So each letter form, you'll see A, B, C, D, all the way through our lowercase letters and a space. You can consider each of these its own file, and Glyphs is letting us uh, put all of these things together. This is sort of like our checklist of what we're going to be doing. Since this is the meat and potatoes, we'll just start right here. If I double click this capital A, it opens what looks to be another tab. So you notice now we have tabs up here. We have a tab called font and we have this other panel. This is our capital A and you should notice some of the terms that we talked about in a previous video. We have our baseline right here, our cap height, our ascender, and our descender. Remember, these are our words around the letter forms. But you might notice that there is no X height. That's because Glyphs is telling you, hey, this is a capital letter form. So we're going to start with that. To get back to our home, we can just select that font right there, and it'll bring us home. If we choose something like a lowercase a, so I'll double click on the lowercase a, you'll see now I have ascender, X height, baseline, and descender. Again, we refer to that X height as applying to our lowercase letter forms, so it's right there. The other thing you might notice is that there are some grays and some darker colors in here. If I zoom in, I can just zoom and move around this artboard however I want. You can see we can zoom to wherever. And if you zoom in far enough, you can get to this sort of pixel version, which is just like our other documents. But you might notice here that there's an X height that marks this darker sort of brown line. And then there's this sort of opaque brown line in the middle there. Just like in our type terms, Glyphs is telling us or allowing us to set our overshoot. So when we go into setting up our masters, we'll talk about how we set up those measurements for our overshoots. But for now, it's important to just know that that's where they live. So if we look to our left here, we can see that there are categories and languages. These are all sort of filtering systems, but also good tools for adding other letter forms. If, for example, we want to add a set of numbers, we could go in here and select the number dropdown. We could choose decimal or old style, lining figures, whatever we might want. And with a simple right click, we could choose to generate any of these characters. Maybe I want to generate all of my lining figures. 
it'll generate those and now I can only see those. Well, that's because I'm only selected in that lining figures tab. If I choose all, it'll take me back to my home where I have my upper and lower case. And now I also have my lining figures here. Similarly, if I want to add other characters, down at the bottom here, there's a little plus. I could select that plus, and it'll auto-populate with something called new glyph. But if I want to say design an at symbol or maybe an ampersand, I can just type in this area here, tap enter, and it'll auto-generate an ampersand under this symbol's character. If I needed some of these other letter forms or I deleted them, I could go in and just add characters individually and build up my font book as we go. One additional note that I like to use while I'm in this interface is the labeling system. So I might start and if I select a letter form, you can see down here in this bottom left panel that there are colors down here and I can select that and let's say I select this orange and then select the B. You can see that that A that I had selected is now orange and we can change and manipulate any of these colors to be any of these labels down here which is really wonderful so you could have this sort of technicolor alphabet if you want or and this is the way that I tend to use it holding shift I can select multiple things I like to use it and say at the very beginning of my process we're gonna start with the color red and this means that my letter forms are at a certain process as they get refined, I move them down this color scheme until ultimately they're to this sort of publishing colors down here in the purple and the pink areas. In the right hand panel, you'll find our layers. The layers in glyphs function like different weights. So once we add a bold or a light, those will show up in this panel as layers. There's also measurements down here, such as uh, tools that help us rotate or slant things, things that help us align elements. We'll get into these quite a bit more once we start to draw, but until then, this is what you largely need to know to get into glyphs. So that's our introduction to glyphs. If you haven't seen it before, check out the next videos for your next steps.